start streaming. Today we are gonna fix Faisal's phone here that went in the salt water. Yee! Um, and I, I like this case because um, it teaches us something about what to do when diode mode doesn't show any short or open. What do you do from there? So let's start with the note and physical exam. The note, Faisal says that his phone accidentally went snorkeling with me in the ocean. The phone was immediately dried with a towel, blown through with hot air from a hairdryer, and then kept in a bag of rice because he didn't have access to silica gel while on the island. Didn't matter, this phone was dead instantly. And he did not attempt to power it on. Good job, Faisal. This was about four days ago. And since then, I've come back home now and I'm worried that the saltwater residue is causing lasting damage, hence requesting rush service. And he's in the UK mailing the phone in and he doesn't care about the phone. So do whatever it takes to get the data. Will do. All right. So this phone went, quote, accidentally went snorkeling in the ocean. So we're going to see if that is uh, consistent with our findings or not. So let's take a look here. If the I took this apart already, and I have um, spent some time with this phone, and then I decided, hey, this would make a good case to do a video on. So this is like, yeah, that's some saltwater damage, straight up saltwater. And when I took the logic board out, the logic board similarly looked pretty much looked pretty much like that. And so I desoldered the shields so that we could put it in ultrasonic. Look at the shields. Like this is, you know, classic saltwater damage. So it's already been through ultrasonic and now it's come out clean. And then I did the next step, which is let's see if it will boot on DC power supply. And I had to put out, solve some short circuits and fix some things for a while until eventually I could see that it would boot on DC power supply. It didn't have backlight, but I could see an image and I could actually get this thing to boot all the way, but it wouldn't respond to USB. And that's where we are right now. So this phone, let me show you what the current state is right now if we put some parts on it. So I'm going to connect a screen and a dock and we are going to need USB in order to be able to, um, to get all the pictures extracted from this device. Let's stick this screen on here. Let's look like a bunch of noobs trying to just connect a screen. How about that? All right, so let's get this on here and I will show you as best I can what it looks like. Geez, this screen is really giving me a hard time. There we go. Screen is attached. Hello from Dubai. All right. Um, now let's flip it around and we're gonna attach a dock. And I will attach the DC power supply even though you guys won't really be able to see what this does. This is kind of like a battery. This is the DC power supply that's applying a battery voltage, but I can see what's going on with the current consumption. All right, so this is not the native screen. This is our rule number one. You don't have a board problem until you know you don't have a parts problem. So I know that this screen dock and DC power supply will work. All right, so now let's prompt the phone to boot. So we can prompt a phone to boot two ways. Since this phone doesn't have backlight, I'm gonna go ahead and put a flashlight under here. We can prompt it to boot with plugging it in to USB. So let's do that. So here is our USB ammeter and let's see if it will respond to a prompt by USB. So I'm going to plug that into the dock. So it's plugged into the dock connector. You see that? There we go. So I plugged it into the dock and I see no current consumption and I see nothing on the screen. So it's as if it didn't have a charge port at all. It's not responding to the prompt to boot from the actual charge port. All right, so now I don't know if it's, I don't know what state it's in, doesn't do anything. So let's go ahead and prompt it to boot the other way. So we're gonna prompt it to boot at the power button. So I'm gonna simulate what the power button does. 
by just kind of running some tweezers in that power pin. And let's see if I can do that. And it's awkward working with this hand cam. And awkward up there. Might have to look under the microscope. My eyes are so much worse this year than they were even a year ago. 45 is not kind. All right, let's see. Let's grab some tweezers that can prompt and see if we can see what's going on here with chat. We haven't done like a straight up live repair stream in a long time. All right, let's see. Can we prompt this way? No. There we go. So I got it to prompt to boot. And hopefully you guys can see this weak flashlight. You can see Apple logo. See it? There we go. Apple logo, Apple logo, Apple logo. And now we'll be able to see that this phone actually, at least in theory, can boot up. But it can't detect USB. And that's the problem that we're trying to solve. It's way easier if I can show you with using the microscope light as the light. There we go. OK, so we're at the lock screen. It's hard to show on video. See there? There we go. So we can even type in passcode. And we have a path to data. But if we say, all right, then let's extract the data. Let's connect it to the computer and plug it in. We hear nothing. Plug, unplug, plug, unplug. So the computer doesn't detect this device. So we have a problem with the USB interface. So what do you think is going on with this phone? Why is it that we have lost USB connection? And that's the current state. I'm going to unplug this while we think about it. So USB connection is gone. Now we can spend some time looking on the schematic to try to understand how USB um, detection works. and um, let's go ahead and do that really quickly. So let's find a schematic. Here we go. This is, let's see, where is this? This is um, <clears throat> Tigris, which has 5 volt USB, goes to Tigris, and our 5 volt USB, what's it called? 5 volt USB PP5V0. PP5V0 comes from the charge port and it goes to test point and it goes to Tigris and it goes here. PP5 volt USB comes from the charger. It goes through this dude, which is a MOSFET, and it ends up changing its name. This is still. 5 volt tri charger voltage, PP TriStar PN. So this is also our charger voltage going here to TriStar. So what are the most common failure points for this line over any kind of device with any kind of history? It is TriStar. TriStar has a kind of like a data connection here. And when you blow 5 volts in there, it's really easy to electrically damage TriStar. And the other common failure point, especially with water damage in a 6S Plus, would be where the water goes. So the water is going to often go under here at, at Tigris. So what would be the next step? What do you guys think we should do next? We don't have USB, and we don't know why. This is a heavily salt water damage phone. What do you think, chat? I'm going to open up the chat. Uh, window here let's see and see what chat has to say about it what do you guys think chat let's see something about soda cans apple and ipods glasses oh i i'm way past that i've been wearing glasses since kindergarten all right anybody have any ideas on <clears throat> windshield wiper of them sounds like a great idea let's just rule out the common problems so we're going to look at the device and see that, yes, there was water in the area of TriStar and in the area of Tigris, so I changed them. So that was the first thing that I did. I took off TriStar, 
cleaned the corrosion, put on a new TriStar. I took off Tigris, cleaned the corrosion, and put on a new Tigris. And guess what? That's already been done, and the phone is still in the state where it doesn't detect USB. So now we have to dig a little bit deeper. Let's go back to the charge port itself and see if we can guess how does USB communication really work. So if we stare here at the charge port, we can see a lot of things for speakers and headphones. Here's one, TriStar Connection Detect. TriStar Connection Detect, that's an important one. And then over here on the other side, we can see these other important ones. TriStar Accessory 2, Data Pair 2, Data Pair 1, TriStar Accessory 1. So one, two, three, four, five, six, PP5EO7, and TriStar Connection Detect 8. Those are the eight important lines for USB communication that go from the dock to TriStar. And those are the same eight lines that the TriStar tester will test when we plug it in to test, uh, hey, what's up with USB? So if we have already replaced TriStar, we've ruled out the common problems. We've also already replaced Tigris. What is the next thing to do? Let's see what you guys think in chat. We've already replaced TriStar. We've already replaced Tigris. Now we kind of understand that we need to have those eight lines working, TriStar Connection Detect and TriStar Accessory 1 and 2, Data Pair 1, Data Pair 2, and 5 volt USB. Those all need to be working in order for the device to detect that you plug the charger in. So what's the next step? Let's see, chat. Did you get it? Replace iPhone. That's a little, that's a little rough because uh, Faisal wants his pictures back from his accidental snorkeling. Plus, we need to figure out if Faisal accidentally dropped his phone or did he intentionally try to take pictures under the water. So we, gotta, we can't just replace the phone. See if the connector is damaged. All right, that's fair enough. We can put our eyes on the connector and see if the connector is damaged. Try another USB flex cable. That's part of rule number one. So we're gonna say we've already done that. We, are, we know we have a board problem because we've already ruled out parts problems. I would check the USB charging IC chip first. That's Tigris and we've already replaced Tigris. Replace the connector. Power management chip. Well, power management chip doesn't have anything to do with this so far because nothing that we can see here goes to power management. These are all lines that go from the dock to TriStar. Let's follow a little bit to be, um, to be clear. TriStar connection detect, we could follow that one. So one, USB five volt two, TriStar accessory, one and two, three, four, pair one, five, six, pair two, seven, eight. We, those are the important lines. And we, if we follow them in the schematic and working from the schematic is really, really important. If we just kind of use ZXW, we, we miss the understanding of what these things are actually doing, how do they connect and how do they work. So we could take, um, take this one here and see if we can learn a little bit more about it. But I still want you to tell me, chat, what should I do? I've replaced the common chips just to uh, solve it real quick. That didn't work. So now I've got to use my brain. How do I, you know, how do I test these eight lines to see if there is a problem or not? All right, so let's hit find. And while you guys answer that, let's kind of follow one of them. Try start connection detect. It goes from the connector to, uh, goes through a resistor here and it ends up changing its name a little bit on the other side of the resistor. And let's follow it from the resistor to wherever it goes. And it goes to a test point, okay. And then it goes to TriStar. Here's TriStar. And we can see that all those other lines end up here as well. This is the five volt charger voltage, accessory one, two, pair one, two, pair two and connection detect. These guys are all the, the lines from the dock to the chip. So let's see, chat, did you figure out what we should do next? Here we go, handheld rehab. It's Larry Johnson for the win. Diode mode test, TriStar um, pads to a known good board. So that's, that's a really, really close to what I was fishing for, which is why not just diode mode TriStar lines at the dock, right? So we could get out the trusty old iBridge, which is exactly what I did. I got out the, the iBridge 
and have promptly lost it. Oh yeah, I already, I even put it away. Go me. So the iBridge is the little handy tool that lets you plug it into a connector in diode mode for any short or open. And guess what? I did not find any short or open at the connector. So Larry said, why don't you diode mode the pads under TriStar? Now diode mode is a test that asks this question. Is this line short or is this line open? And I wanted to make this video to make a point, which is you can still have a problem even if a line is not short or open. And in fact, this is how TriStar fails a lot, right? Why does the TriStar tester work, the digital tester work, when that dumb breakout board is stupid and useless? The breakout board just does a diode mode test. And TriStar doesn't fail by becoming short or open. It fails by having electrical functional damage within the chip itself. So it's not short or open, or if so, it's, it's rare. Um, it fails because the chip can't do its job. So in addition to being short or open, the third failure type is when a chip can't do its job, even though the line isn't short or open. All right, so I did, or I didn't do it, but if I had, if we took off TriStar and we did diode mode under TriStar, guess what? No shorts, no open under TriStar. But it's a good path to think about, you know, what kind of, uh, what kind of problems could, could we see? So I'm going to, um, have you tried reflowing the CPU? No, I have not. Uh, let's see. Let's go and understand uh, there's not a lot of failure points between TriStar and the dock, and there's not a lot of failure points under TriStar either. So I've already kind of cleared that by just changing that chip, cleaning all the pads and putting, um, putting the new chip on. The dock itself looks good. Let's go ahead and look at the device. Let's take this down for a second. And let's take hand cam down for a second so that we can actually take a look at this board. And I want you to, to think, all right, if we don't have any kind of a diode mode problem at the dock, yikes. I mean, this board was pretty damaged. But the dock itself and its connections, those all are pretty much okay. And I have already replaced TriStar. We can see, what does it look like around TriStar? You know, it really doesn't look terrible. And that's a new replacement TriStar. And I've already replaced Tigris as well. And we can see that there's a lot more damage in this area. And we've got some components that are kind of in the neighborhood that maybe could, could give us some trouble. But let's go back to the schematic for a second and let's see um, <clears throat> if we can kind of make the point that I want to make with this video. Let's see if I can find my spot. Um, I could do with some music at the moment. All right, let's take you guys from um, TriStar. So TriStar is the chip that detects, hey, something's plugged in. And it's the receptionist that says, hey, who is that? What do you want? It's not the charging chip though, right? It's just the secretary, the negotiator at the USB interface. So let's say that you did plug in a charger that you want to connect to the computer like I do to get Faisal's photos um, sucked off so that he can um, get, his, get his memories back. So then how does TriStar really work? Where's its output? So if we searched around these for a while, and, and you should do this, you should spend time looking at the schematic, how does this stuff work? Uh, we could figure out what the output is, and the output is this one, TriStar to Tigris VBus protection off. So let's follow that. So let's copy, this is the output, and how do we know that? From comparing across multiple schematics, seeing where all these other lines go, and I think on iPad Air, that line is labeled out. So that's another good clue and a great way to learn is kind of seeing what's the same and what's different between different models. All right, where does that line go? From TriStar to ultimately to Tigris. So here's Tigris. Tigris is the charging chip. We can see Tigris taking that five volt USB in. We can see how it generates a high voltage on main and that ultimately charges the device. But we can see that there's a lot of other stuff, regulatory stuff going on with Tigris itself. Here's Tigris talking to battery single wire interface. So Tigris is paying attention to, hey, uh, what's going on with the battery? That battery charged up yet? 
And then we've got this stuff here as well. This line is how we got here. Tristar to Tigris, V bus os. This is the signal from Tristar to Tigris. It says, hey, buddy, I got a charger here. Yeah. I already checked his ID. It's a legit charger. So go ahead and do what you're going to do. Allow that 5-volt V bus in so that you can start charging if you want. And then we've got these other lines here. This is a general intercom line. We've got this system alive line, which I believe um, is how <clears throat> is how the device will halt um, some restore or update if the battery percentage is too low. Tigris can sense the battery. Tigris can tell, hey, take take a rest until I come back alive and then finish up that update. And then we've got this one here, Tigris to PMU INT. So this one is what I want to call your attention to for this stream. So let's think about it. int interrupt interrupt tigris to pmu interrupt it's a one or a zero data line and this guy is really important so let's think about it if this line wasn't working or any of these other kind of data lines that regulate or control the chip is it possible that everything's all fine out at the connector everything's all fine out where we measure things but we ultimately have a a problem of information hey chip do your job hey i'm enabling resetting turning you off or on i'm controlling and regulating you that's the exact problem that happens in touch disease right where m1 gets loose and therefore we've messed up the reset for that chip right it's the same thing that happens with audio ic disease where c12 that's master clock that's another regulatory line and then we've got these ones here at Tigris. So if we've replaced the chip and we don't see any problem in the path between the chip out to the connector, diode mode doesn't pick up a problem, then we have to really think, how is this system being controlled? And we've got to look for why is the chip not being told to do his job? Is he not getting power? Is he not told to turn on and look more broadly for problems? So this one here then, I. Uh, I'm picking this one because I noticed something. I noticed something when I was looking at the actual board itself, and let's see what you guys think. As I look around this, um, this Tigris, with water damage, the problem is where the water went. So you're looking at a sort of a, an overlap between the physical presentation, where did the water go, and what the schematic says about the system that's not working. And that overlap is right here at Tigris. Always be thinking, how did it come to be like this? Something happened. It had to be water, and it was probably near Tigris because that's where it's all messed up. We've already replaced Tigris, so now we're going to use our brain a little bit. And tell me what you guys think as we drill down. A lot of this stuff looks really ugly. But the ugliest spot, what do you guys think is the ugliest looking spot in this view? What do you guys think is the ugliest looking thing around? Let's see. I'm sure that someone on the Apple forum can help you with this. Yes, we should go over there and, and ask them. That's right. Um, the microscope being used is in the description, yes. And all sorts of things. What microscope do I use? The one, all of our stuff is at store.ipadrehab.com. Everything that we use, we made a new category, how to get started microsoldering, where we've got everything there. Chips, flux, uh, tweezers, soldering station, microscope, uh, everything that we use is right there for you guys to, to check out. All right, so what jumps out at me in this view is right here. Ding, 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 ding. Something is missing right there. And I can see like extreme corrosion on these, these pads. This is like extreme oxidation. And it might be that there was never any component there at all, but I don't think so. A no stuff, meaning something that was never there, never stuffed to begin with, is going to look like that. Here, this looks like two pads. One is extremely oxide. You can barely even see it. It looks a, like a total shit stain. When you see a pad like that, you know, that should, that should kind of jump out at you. And then here, I've got a resistor that looks like, ah, uh, is he even on the board there? Let's kind of put a little bit more light here. You know, that looks, 
that looks really problematic. So let's look up and see what goes in that position. So now we can go over to ZXW and we can say, hey, what, what goes in that spot? Is this my ZXW? There we go. And this is why I decided to do this stream because I've seen this before a couple times. And this is the kind of thing that really trolls people because if your mindset is just, I don't have USB, go to the connector, diode mode, I don't have any problem. Well, do you speak? It's got to be TriStar, diode, diode mode there. I don't have any problem. You have to kind of really look at the schematic, really look at the system and come up with things that could be problematic that match what the physical exam is. Where did the water go for water damage? So here we are. This guy is missing. R2311, R2311. So let's look up. What is our 2311 on the schematic? And also the guy that looks really bad is our 2400, which is on that battery data line. But let's look up our 2311 and let's, let me find it, our 2311. Get out of here, back to the schematic. And here's my schematic and let's do it. Our 2311, our 2311 is a resistor and it doesn't say no stuff on the schematic. ZXW doesn't know it. It doesn't identify with no stuff. So it doesn't ever mark them. It doesn't recognize them at all. So only the schematic or comparing to a board, uh, you know, a working board can tell you if something is no stuff. So R2311 is a 100 ohm resistor and it is on this interrupt line. So Tigris needs to be able to say, excuse me, I want to say something. So that's the purpose of an interrupt line so that Tigris can then communicate. So if you don't have this interrupt line, if it's open because the resistor has gone, then Tigris is essentially mute, right? It can't communicate to the, the PMU or the CPU or wherever that line is going to go. Now, how could you pick this up if you didn't notice it? Well, you might be able to pick that up if you did, you know, diode mode under the chip, which was Larry's suggestion. So under Tigris, we would have picked that up. But it's hard to imagine that Tigris would really play a role in just straight up USB detection. So this thing does not detect that there is a, uh, that, that there's anything plugged in. Okay, so Tigris to PMU interrupt. R2311 is gone, so we know that this interrupt line is broken. Now, why is it there to begin with? Why not just make it a wire? Why is that? And this, I think, is really relevant because I saw a forum question asking about, like, you know, why can't you just sort of inject into, the, into a line, you know, that kind of thing. This guy is here to separate um, so that Tigris can drop that line, kind of touch it to ground and make it a zero. Um, when it wants to without bothering everything else. All right, so we can't just put a wire there. We need to, um, we need to put that resistor back there because without it, when we plug in USB, we have no way to trigger the prompt to boot, which is PP1V always. And that makes a lot of sense with what we actually see on this device. So who thinks that we should put back our 2311 and see if that is all it takes to regain USB detection? Let's see what you guys think about all of that. All right, let's see. Um, first time viewing a stream. All right, what program are you using? This is ZXW. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and replace that with a 100 ohm resistor that meets those same specifications. And we're gonna grab that from a donor board. Now, when we look at the actual pads that it needs to sit on one and two, we are gonna put it on, you know, in a, if we try to kind of rejuvenate these pads to begin with, I'm a little bit worried about that one that is really, really dark. What happens, what will happen to us if that really, really ugly shit stain looking pad, what will happen if it actually, you know, can't be rejuvenated back into a pad? Then what would we do? All right, let's find our spot and we're going to just see what we can do here to touch this up. 
Yeah, see it's see how this pad is floppy and it's moving around. Ah, that makes me really worried. It's, I'm worried that he's going to come off. So if he did, I want you to think about what could we do if that pad just flew off? Well, we can read the board and we can see where does it go. And it's pretty clear that, oh, you guys can't see that. It's pretty clear that this floppy pad here, see how he's moving around? Oh, he's going to break off. That guy goes to this adjacent resistor. And on the other side of that resistor is PP1V8 always. So all we need to do is really apply, instead of the resistor from A to B, we could apply, since that, those guys are connected, we could put the resistor from A to B and tag it into the butt end of that resistor. What do you think about that? All right, let's grab a donor board. Let's see. Here we go. Man, this one's, ooh, I can see why this is a donor board. That, that board's been hurt. Okay, now we're going to grab off on the bottom side our uh, beautiful looking R2311. So let's just take it off. Let's take it off with hot air because why not? And let's see if we can move it without losing it. Here's another pro tip. Don't try to grab it. So it's too tiny to grab with tweezers. Just let it stick to one side or the other. All right, and now we're gonna park it here where it goes. And our goal is really to just get him, he can sit on this pad if he wants to, but just for the fun of it, it would be just as fun to kind of nudge him up to his buddy. So let's see if we can get those guys to sit on those pads. Let's see if I can solder him on without him taking flight. There you go. There we go. Look at that. That's so tiny, it's hard to get in focus. So now our 2311 is back in position. He's kind of doing a little bit of a workaround because that loose pad there was really, really floppy. But at least in theory, this is back on. So let's see what happens if we try and get this thing to detect USB. We're gonna see what happens. Let's see what happens. So let's drag out. Let's drag this out and we're gonna put this back together. Now I'm curious to know whether or not Faisal actually, it says accidentally took his phone snorkeling or did, was it like not an accident at all? All right, let's see. All right, we're gonna connect in DC power and Let's see if I can prop this up so that you guys can see it. There we go. We're going to dig up a charger and let's see what happens now. So last time we had no USB communication, no detection, no nothing as if we didn't even have a charge port. And now let's see what happens. Oh, it looks like it's the same. Oh no, here we go. Let's see. Let's ask, is it actually being prompted to boot? I'm going to split that screen. 
and shine a light under here. Aha, so improvement. Hey, look at that, it's even charging. So we now are able to prompt this phone to boot by USB, and before we couldn't do that. No matter how many times we plugged and unplugged, it would not prompt to boot from USB. Hey, and there it is. Let's go ahead and enter in the passcode here. Let's see. Uh, let's, let's, ah, let's make, take away hand cam for a second. All right. Let's see if I can do that. All right, so now I'm at the lock screen. All right, so now I'm at the lock screen and I'm gonna see if we have USB detection. Let's see, actually I'm gonna switch it to, before I do that, I'm gonna switch it to a battery so that we can actually recover. Because it looks good for recovery. It's gonna look good for Faisal today. All right, let's see. With the battery connected, can I prompt it to boot? Prompt, prompt, prompt to boot. I see Apple logo, I see charging. I'm gonna have to do the passcode again. I'm gonna plug it into the computer. And let's get this ready. And then we're gonna find out whether or not this was accidentally went snorkeling with me in the ocean. What we've been doing lately is we've been having a lot of fun this summer with, um, I, I almost want to make a book. I entered in the passcode and we have a, um, we have a path to data. All right. So uh, we're gonna, we're gonna have, we've been having a lot of fun lately because we have been um, questioning you know, all of these water damage cases, and there's a whole lot of ones that are he said, she said about what happened to the phone before it died. And the last picture on the photo roll is always really telling. So we called Faisal and said, hey, well, can, will you let us live stream your recovery? He said, oh boy, yes. So we're gonna call him up. Sunday, are you there? I'm here. All right, so Sunday is gonna call him up while we take a look here to see what is the last picture on this phone? All right, so let me see if I can actually do that here in 3U tools. All right, okay. So, he, so we called him and asked if we could do this. He said yes. So let's add to our window. We're gonna do a window capture and of 3U tools. All right, here is, here we go. All right, so what do you guys, what do you guys think? All right, can you come talk to us? So, Justice, have you been following your live stream here? Repair? Hey, it's good news! He's ready here. Hey, it's good news. We recovered the data from your phone. I can see your amazing trip. Tell us about how yeah, this, I you can, you can, oh my God, so crazy. Um, tell us about this trip, where'd you go? So we went to the Maldives, uh, it was actually a baby move, so it's the last time that uh, my wife, who's in the picture, can um, sort of fly long haul safely. And so, um, yeah, this is like, has lots and lots of pictures from, from that. This was, looks uh, really baby. cool, this, uh, like islandy place where you can go eat lunch just all by yourselves did you go eat lunch out there no i mean that, i think that's like the honeymoon setting but yeah we think that other people are doing there. <laughs> <laughs> and um so here's the thing so S sunday what do you think about this about this uh this story so so you got some pictures here you got a puffer fish underwater sunday thinks that these pictures 
I thought this guy totally took this phone snorkeling. Look, he took all these pictures underwater. No. Sun Sunday says no, that these are pictures that you, that it's the water is so clear that you're actually standing on the dock. You can see the reflection from the top. That is exactly right. Thank you. So, uh, so. Actually, uh, you may even see it. There's a picture. I can actually send it to you. That actually might be a funny thing. So we actually had a, um, uh, like a GoPro in a, in like in a, a case with okay. a little handle. Mm -hmm. so that's what we took water. But this is all above a board. This just happened to be in my board short. Yeah. Uh, when we step off the water. And then as soon as I walked out, I immediately, like, I touched my pocket and I immediately knew what was in there, but it was there by accident. So you did accidentally go smoking. Okay. When you pulled the phone out of your pocket, was it lit up? Was it doing anything? No, oh no, it was, it was dead. It was dead like, as a doornail. Because this, yep. this is the last picture that is on the camera roll. Which That's I thought, <laughs> this is in the water. I see fish. The, sure. Yeah, this there's one no here. This one. Yeah, down. there's no reflection of the sun. Is this picture... This is the last one on your camera roll. Is that picture one yeah, that your that phone took or you took it? No, so that was, so that was from the phone. And I, I'm not sure who took it, but it was not in the water. Okay. By, by any means. I think actually if you look at it, it's probably zoomed in as well. Okay. To to get the, uh, oh, I see. Uh, yeah, okay. Because it looks intentional. Because there's like the little like black tang or something that is going right. by. Um, and then we thought... We thought um, that it was cool that you went someplace that that actually gives you mayonnaise is that for fries look at this burger yeah. picture yeah uh, it's bizarre that it comes in tins but the thing is if we're on the island so i'm guessing that it must have lots of things shipped in yeah and it must be hard to store things so this okay. is i guess why it happened but it was yeah very cool gotcha did you know when you woke up this morning that you would be looking at a picture of a burger that you once ate weeks ago that's being shown to the whole world from New I, York, I from New York not. State. Total surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I really didn't actually. So I picked my wife, so who's in the, who's in the UK. I'm actually in Switzerland right now, um, who is also watching this live and cannot believe what she's seeing. Um, the actual, and, and if I'm really honest, this wasn't really the images that we wanted. So I think you can see there's over 9,000 images. Yes. Um, and we didn't so look didn't we know. just looked at the these like three or four we we uh we just looked to see what's the last picture this guy took on here and uh then we had a debate over whether or not that this underwater. was underwater like because we have that all the time there'll be ones that'll be like my phone got wet i don't know what happened and the last pictures will be um hey welcome to king's dominion and then hey look we're on a roller coaster and then hey dad's going down a water slide dad's on the water slide and that's it you know and there's a lot of them like that so we always think it's fun to see what is the story of the last picture on the camera roll. Yeah, no, I'm, um, yeah, sorry to disappoint. It, it was actually uh, clear, clear water from the deck. Yes, well, that is a fabulous vacation spot. Uh, I want to go there on a trip now. Wait, yeah. We also want to know what that scoreboard is. Oh, yeah, what's this scoreboard? What's this game? Oh, okay, so my wife will not let me live this down. It was basically the only <laughs> a game which she won. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also known as Petong, um, and she won, and so she really won, she wanted it, a picture of it. And now it is immortalized. For, what's knows. what's your yeah, wife's name? Salma. Salma, congratulations. Well done. Well, well done on that game. All right, perfect. All right, well, thank you for being a good sport. We did... You know, uh, we thought it was fun. I know you called here a few times, so I uh, wanted to give you the good news for today. We have recovered all of these pictures, and we're going to continue to take a full backup and parse all your data. But this one was a fun one, and I thought that the repair community could learn something because it had sort of a, a bit of an odd problem there in the end. So thank you for being a good sport, and I'm going to right, hand you. you so much, you are welcome. I'm going to hand you back to Sunday. And yeah, that, 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 is the, that is the end for this one. So I hope that you guys learned 
um, that if you don't have a shorter open on diode mode, to go to the schematic and look to see what other kinds of things may be controlling that particular function. And sometimes it's beyond the connector to the chip. Sometimes it's beyond the chip to the power source for that chip. So you can always kind of use your brain and kind of walk back, walk back, walk back, and see if you can figure out what is that one missing thing that is making your water damage phone not boot. And that is all for today.